Shelly Miscavige. She has not appeared in public since 2005. Where's Shelly and what happened? Where is Shelly? We're looking at like 17 years of a person just missing. Shelly Miscavige was given into the sole care of L. Ron Hubbard by her parents when she was 12. This is where Shelly is believed to be being held captive. Do you believe that Shelly Miscavige is a threat today? Oh, absolutely. She's seen it all. She's been by his side the whole time. Welcome to the channel. I'm your host for today, Claire Headley. This is our next episode of my series, Where is Shelley Miscavige? My guest today is the beautiful, talented, and amazing Amy Scobie. I so appreciate you joining me today, Amy. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. And you're just as beautiful, if not more. <laughs> I, I, um, thank you. I appreciate it. I don't, I don't know about that, but we'll get, oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll take this road where it leads us. Right. <laughs> and so to give you kind of my, um, my thoughts and kind of what inspired this series, um, you and I both know Shelly Miscavige personally. Yeah. I I knew Shelly for 13 years and I worked with her very closely for eight of those years. Mm -hmm. And actually for four of those years, she was, I reported to her directly, met with mm -hmm. her almost every day. Yeah. And, and, and from my perspective and chime in wherever you'd like, I, it's occurred to me that uh, over the years, the narrative regarding Scientology has dramatically changed. And that's because of the many incredibly brave people like yourself and like Leah Remini, who have yeah. spoken out about the abuses that have occurred in Scientology for decades at this point. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> Leah could have very well just walked away from Scientology and never and just gotten on with her life right mm -hmm. but instead and she could have accepted the status quo when she was started asking where shelly and gotten all kinds of trouble for that mm -hmm. but instead she had the bravery to go no it's not okay where is shelly and where to me it used to be if you'd mentioned scientology people would just say oh that's that crazy thing with tom cruise jumping up and down on a couch now it's Oh, yes, Scientology, I've heard of that. And by the way, where is Shelley Miscavige? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, people want to know. Yeah. The word's and, getting out. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And to me, even more, it's not only that she's his wife, and, I, I, and we'll get to your thoughts and perspective on this too. Shelley was his closest, she was uh, essentially his first lady, that she was mm -hmm. the next in command she was everywhere that he was she witnessed mm -hmm. everything that he did that's right and she was the second top executive in scientology and now she's vanished for 18 mm -hmm. years and she was so respected inside scientology too because she she worked for Alan Hubbard directly. She yes. was his messenger. And so she did a lot of the messenger training. She did messenger training with me as well. And, um, and when you got certified by her on your steps to becoming a real true messenger, you, it was something that you were to be very proud of. Yes, of but, course. Yeah. The messengers, of course, the origin being the young teenagers that worked with Hubbard on the ship, right? Which you're yes. right. Shelly, Shelly was, became a messenger, I think at the age of 12. Mm -hmm. 12 years old yeah 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 and there were all kinds of things that you got taught you were taught how to properly iron uniform shirts or Ellen Hubbard's shirts how to do the laundry and wash his shirts 15 times because <laughs> <laughs> uh, he couldn't stand any odors and uh, taking shorthand and running messages that are an exact duplication of what was what it was meant to be said and you know obtaining compliance it's all kinds of different things but she was definitely respected, especially amongst the people of the Commodore's Messenger Org. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And don't you think, what What are your thoughts on this? I've, I've seen people say, well, why not just have Shelly do a video and say, hey, I'm okay. I mean, there's no way that David Miscavige would let a camera near her. <laughs> right. No, and I agree. And then I, and I've heard people say, oh, no, he would never do that because then, you know, the SPs are right and he would never follow a request like that. 
However, then I was playing devil's advocate on mm -hmm. this and thinking, but wait a minute, he has done this before where he's trotted out the on Anderson Cooper's A History of Violence. Oh my gosh, he did do that. Right. He brought I out know. all the ex wives, the wives to say, Oh, it's all lies. Yeah. Because you know that did more that damage for Scientology's reputation than what he thought he was doing because they yes. all looked like like abused victims. You know? Right. And they all said the exact same line. I know yeah. every inch of his body. <laughs> or <laughs> who says that? things like that <laughs> on national television. <laughs> oh, I know, true. But he. But my point being, so maybe he learned a lesson from that. I kind of doubt it. But no. playing devil's advocate, <laughs> I would say he thought that served his purpose. So mm -hmm. why not do the same with Shelly unless she actually does want to leave and hmm. can't? I don't know. You know, it's like a, a PO, it would be a POW video, you know, just like blink in Morris code. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. How, I mean, it's been years now. She, because I left the int base in 2003 after 20 years of yes. working there and seeing her everywhere. And, um, and then I left and I went to Florida until I, actually left the Sea Org in 2005 but in between there is when she went missing right 2004 or something like that so it she's been like well no it was actually um mid 2005 five okay yeah okay so, so I, I left in January 2005 is when yeah. I escaped yes and as best as I've been able to pin it down um it's between 2005 and 2006 but I absolutely believe the last time she was with David Miscavige in her normal role, as you and I knew her to be mm -hmm. carrying out, was um, until July 2005. That's when all hell broke loose in Shelley's right. world. Right, right. It was breaking loose before I even left, though, um, which I've got stories about because um, oh, I knew we'll that. She... Those. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. It was definitely breaking loose. And she wasn't agreeing with Miscavige with right. her husband or her boss um but she actually displayed it a little bit <laughs> like you know it wasn't it wasn't just you know behind closed doors it was it was becoming evident and and it had that got been, my it, clock it, turning too you know like yes. hmm yeah that isn't okay what he's saying or how he's treating you or what you know he's doing yeah no absolutely and mm -hmm. to me and again the reason uh, another piece of what inspired me to want to do this is first of all, you and I could have easily been in that same position that Shelley's in right now. I like minutes, minutes. I I got off that base just before they locked the doors on the stupid trailer that was my home for years. So yeah, yeah, I could easily be there. Right, and and in my case, even I've reflected on this too. Speaking of Anderson Cooper's A History of Violence show, mm -hmm. had had they actually dragged me back when they intercepted me in Las Vegas At when I was escaping? Bus. Oh at the God. bus station i could have been one of those women trotted out there oh my god can you imagine i mean no. it seriously gives me goosebumps every time i think yes about it. Like, thank goodness oh, i got the man. heck out of there i mean it's awful but anyway back to shelly thank god, thank god. <laughs> yes Not really say my i say my phrases all the time yes that i i was able to get out of there and yes oh my god yes but um but, but yeah so back to the topic easily yeah. it could have been you or i locked up and had that been the case i would have hoped and prayed that somebody would notice that i had vanished yeah or you had vanished mm -hmm. you know and and again i know if there's a my family wouldn't word, have known right who, who were we in touch with i was always out of touch so it wouldn't be anything unusual whatsoever right and even if there's a 1% chance that Shelly wants to get out of there, let's keep talking about this. That's my perspective. <laughs> For sure. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And yes. uh, and then plus, it's just what happened to her? Where right. is she? Like, right. really, for real, where is she? Yes. How is she? It's been like, you know, 17 years that she's like AWOL. So yes. is she six feet under? somewhere yeah. or are you you know she's a captive she's a, yes. either a slave or she's gone so yes. where is she yeah. she's a person that we knew and we want to know where she is yes exactly and also before we get into i'll let you take the floor and your your experiences with shelly to me also 
this question, where is Shelley Miscavige, epitomizes everything that is wrong with Scientology. Mm -hmm. Sum it up in that question. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, all right, into the show. So how about we start with <laughs> wh when did you first meet Shelley Miscavige? And let's let's go through all those details. OK, well, I went to the uh, the International Headquarters base in Hemet in 1983, but they were really um, at author services in L.A. So I didn't have a lot of uh, interaction, even though I was at the International Headquarters until they came. Um, to kind of take over in 1987. And that's a whole thing in itself. But that's when I started having interactions with both David Miscavige and Shelley. Okay. And um, of course, the takeover is when Hubbard passed away and Miscavige wrangled his way into his right. power position that he holds to this day, right? That's exactly correct. And um, boy, did things change. <laughs> he took over i mean no family pictures in your office no plants in your office every you know the whole place was put under lower conditions and as a group and we were all uh days off got canceled all kinds of things changed under him no music in the offices anyway whatever he's he's just a tyrant but um so I was in the executive council of um, Commoners Messenger Org International at that time. Okay. And so um, a lot, I was, I was what's called an organizing officer for the chief officer over all the production divisions and, and the watchdog committee. And so whenever something went wrong with one of the people under our charge, it came to me to remedy. And um, so Miscavige would have me... Um, report to him what I was doing on these okay. people, especially like the the unit that wrote LRH's policy, uh, L. Ron Hubbard's policy and tech, uh, which is research and, you know, technology center, um, that those that group of people were in trouble often because they, he was trying to get them to do things. So I was having to write individual programs on everyone there and report to him. So when but the first time that I really had interaction with Shelley, was I was over, I was the super, it's called a supercargo. It's over the um, personnel departments, the ethics, um, treasury, promotion, all this stuff. Yes. Yeah, so and like um, the, the real world equivalent of human resources. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. With a few little extras shaking in there. Uh, <laughs> yes. But, um, helpful, but uh, <laughs> that kind of equivalent. <laughs> yeah. The Religious Technology Center, especially um, David Miscavige's office, was directly handling celebrities. Um, and they um, were there. The RTC auditors were auditing the celebrities um celebrity center at the time was unrenovated they were out in trailers um while the building was being renovated and there was like no celebrities really on their lines there at all because it was like just a muddy mess down there and, um, and what year and, was this now uh, 1990 that i'm talking about right now okay 1990 and and, yeah. and talk about just side comment yeah ironically 1990 i remember those trailers because i was actually a public training at celebrities you were at that time <laughs> you're kidding and then, then the staff were eating in a tent and it would rain and flood yes into their yes i remember the tent too <laughs> oh, that's amazing i had no idea yeah yeah so so yeah um so what happened was shelly asked me to do a project for her which was to man up tom cruise's household with qualified oh. Scientologists so that he was surrounded by Scientologists um, to keep him in the fold. And um, so I had a list of different things that I had to hire for, which was like a, a maid, a cook, a, you know, a, a, a nanny, all these things. Wow, and so, so already back in 1990, mm -hmm. Shelley was manning up Tom Cruise's household. Yeah. Wow. And you know what's so funny when I uh, I went to Tom Cruise's house. He wasn't there when I went there. I went there with Tommy Davis and um, Jenny Gaynor was there, um, who's from the L. Ron Hubbard's household, you know, but she's taking care of Tom Cruise. So he's getting the special treatment. Um, and I found out that a lot of people were working there. They they built a whole um, in-house theater, big, beautiful theater in there. And the sound system was from the audiovisual team at the Int Base. And so he was getting mega special free labor wow. from Scientology yeah. and, and of course I'm we know sitting there manning up his household. Yeah. And of course we know that continued up until when we left 
So yeah, John, 50... John Brousseau has great yes. stories about that. Yeah, yes. about all the stuff that, that he did for him and made for him. People can look that up. It's amazing. Yes. I didn't know any of it was going on besides what I was doing. And right. to see all of that, it kind of was pretty surprising to me. You know, Tom Cruise, we're going to kiss your ass <laughs> until you, you know, until you're in propitiation. I don't know. Anyway, so I did this project. And so what I had to do is I had to video my interviews with people and then send the videos with um, a completed staff work proposal to Shelly saying, you know, if the what I think, should this person be hired? Should it not be hired? Who I like, you know, give her the four videos of the people that I did and with my recommendation of who could, should be hired for that specific position. So okay. I did that for a while um, down in Los Angeles in WISE, the World Institute of Scientology Enterprise front group for Scientology. That's where I was doing the interviews. Okay. Um, how many, so how many I did people that. Do you think you interviewed over what kind of a time period, just for context? Um, I mean, it was several weeks and um, I don't know, like 20 people or something like that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. all Scientologists. All Scientologists. They had to be Scientologists yes. and they had to have certain requirements and they had to be beautiful and skinny and <laughs> all these different things. All I remember things. proposing a nanny that, you know, was a little bit overweight and it was a flap, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so then from there, um, so there was no watchdog committee member for Celebrity Center. And, um, but anyway, I was interacting with Shelley a lot on that project. And so it came up that I was a uh, potential for it because of my interacting, you know, with, on this project. And so um, I remember being in Shelley's little apartment um, in Los Angeles and she made us waffles <laughs> and uh, she was talking about becoming the Washington committee member for the Sandwich Center. And she said, you know, you could get your teeth fixed. And I'm like, what's the matter with my teeth? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I had baby teeth, you know? So she said, there's a, you know, the in-house dentist can fix your teeth. And so it was ordered that the in-house dentist fix my teeth from the COB's office. And so wow. I got this stupid, bridge with a metal plate and the little teeth implants <laughs> where it would break off oh my by this guy who was just really should not have been a dentist. Bob anyway. Horn, right? Bob Horn. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He fixed me right up. Oh my gosh. I know. I, we could, we could do a whole episode just on the nightmares of Bob Horn, the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> the whole medical office there. You yes. Know. Oh, yes. Boy. Okay. Yeah. So, but, but either way, we won't, we won't diverge for now. <laughs> <laughs> so then I was appointed as the watchdog committee member for Celebrity Center. So now when I went on that job, because everything was being done by RTC, um, and, and now there's a person in watchdog committee, uh, Shelley wanted me to do every single condition formula step as you're going on a new position, you do things, you do condition formulas like not new post non-existence formula where you, and, and the date, then go on up like the danger formula, emergency formula, all the way until you're normal in power. Yeah. <laughs> and so she wanted every step of every condition uh, submitted to her for approval. Oh, wow. So yeah, that was fun to get um, the handling of celebrities back over to Celebrity Center. And it, it was a project because they didn't have trained staff. They, they had, didn't have anyone trusted down there. They didn't even have a building. So I just did a ton of projects to get the place renovated and staffed up and everyone trained and, and so on and so forth. And yeah. uh, it was, that's a whole thing in itself. It was uh, extensive, but it did happen. And Celebrity Center expanded to um, a big going concern. Um, so then while I was a D WDCCC, um, Washtenaw Committee member for Celebrity Centers is what that means. Um, Which, uh, wait, wait, and, and again, I think you said it, but it is the top management position in Scientology over Celebrity Centers, right? Yes, yeah. yes. And um, I was on that, I had that job for about 10 years. So I definitely which is which is uh, like a lifetime in Scientology. <laughs> it's a lifetime. <laughs> right? Not only by the number of hours you worked, but also by the fact that 
most people would never last that long on a position like that. Yeah. And, and usually in Scientology, you're like on a job, off a job, on a job, off a job, up and down, up and down. But that one I was on for a while. Um, yes. And then uh, so Shelly and I became friends during that time and, you know, she would throw birthday party for me and uh, we became friends. And one time um, she asked me, so at the dining hall, Dave Miscavige sat at the captain's table. And you're and talking about the base in Hemet. At the Dominic's dining base. hall at the Hemet. Yes. International headquarters in base. Yes. The Massacre so, Canyon in MCI. Yeah. yeah, we call it MCI because it was called Massacre Canyon originally, but it's the big dining hall where everybody would eat. And so the big um, captain's table was David Miscavige's table. And then next to it was the watchdog committee. So I sat at a table next to David Miscavige and whatever executives he had sitting with him. Yes. And Shelly was like, come over and, you know, you need to make this your table. Sit, come sit with me, you know? Mm. And I said, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, why not? And then I look over at Miss Cabbage <laughs> and she said, I can never have any friends, you know? And wow. so, yeah, I felt for her because yeah. I'm not going to sit there. I knew what it would be like. I'd be berated, you know, and, and talk about things I didn't want to talk about. I couldn't just have a meal. So I didn't want to do it. And I made it kind of clear that that's why I was her freaky husband. Wow. And what year was that? Mm, roughly? Um, probably 96 uh, or no, 94, probably. Okay. Something okay. like that. Yeah. So even, so even back then there were cracks forming in terms of Shelley's situation. Yeah, she knew. I mean, how can she have friends? Right. Yeah. With that guy as her husband. There's no like privacy or personal communication. You're, you, I felt like when I was alone with her, I could totally talk to her and mm -hmm. and uh, be myself. But the second he was there, it was no, you could not. You cannot yeah. be. There was nothing personal. I'm, when the day we were eating waffles in her room, he came in, took off his shirt, and wa walking around in his room with a t-shirt on him. I'm like, I need to exit stage left really fast. Right. <laughs> but uh, um, so one time we were at. This is the time. This was interesting to me. It had a big impact on me. We were at Celebrity Center. It was going to be the day of the gala, uh, one of the gala events that was held every year. I don't remember which year this was, probably 93, maybe. And um, I was supposed to have David Miscavige's speech ready. Um, and you were I don't to write, write speeches. I don't write speeches. I, Ronnie Miscavige was the one who was writing it. And oh, okay. he didn't like what Ronnie wrote. And he was pissed at me for not having his speech ready. Okay. He's supposed to in an hour and a half, go and stand up there and speak to all the top celebrities and everybody who's at the gala. And he didn't like the speech. So, um, so of course he's totally pissed off. We're in the president's office and he rips up the entire thing that was prepared for him. And he just starts handwriting, whatever it is that he's going to say. And he handwrites it all out and he finishes it. And then he comes over and grabs me around the neck and throttles me. Oh, geez. Yeah. Like, you know, and he says, next time you're going to the rehabilitation project force. Wow. And so, of course, it's in front of all my juniors who are there in the president's office and everything else, which whatever, it shows his colors. But um, yeah, and but it throttled me. Psychopath. I mean, I just tried to make sure that that gala was the best, was totally set up. I mean, there's a lot of details to doing that. Yeah. All the food, all the celebrities, all, all the parking, all the everything, security. And and his dang speech. And um, and if he's going to do a speech, write it, sucker. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I yeah. say to him now, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. But so Shelly's there. And so all I, I probably smoked 500 cigarettes. I just like kind of walked around just what just happened. Um, right. And. The, the event went off without a hitch. I was actually pretty shocked that he was able to just get up there and rattle off a speech, you know, that he just hand wrote with his chicken scratch two minutes before. Yeah, the, the, so for, that was the for all good. we know, to be fair, he may have just written his own speech before. Already. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then he was just showing off. 
right? <laughs> so then, uh, so then Shelly calls me over kind of after everything has died down and people are just mingling at tables and stuff like that. And it's such a beautiful ambience there with all the twinkle lights and everything set up beautifully. And, and she sits me down and she says, you know, I want to promote you <laughs> to um, being responsible for all Scientology organizations around the world, because I want you to make them just like Celebrity Center. Wow. I'm looking at her like, were you just like there? <laughs> Did you not just see what, what, I, what I just went through? Holy crap. Okay, now I need another cigarette. Yeah, right? Or another 500. <laughs> oh, man. So shortly thereafter, I was, I was made the, the watchdog committee member for all Scientology organizations, all Sea Org organizations, and all celebrity centers. And so I had that as well as the flag bureau, which is the management over all of those organizations. So I, my name tag was like, you know, WC, S O S E N C C F B across my entire thing. Um, and so that's how that ended up. But, um, I individually got replaced on each one of them because then in 1996, I became the command channels in charge um, to, for the new era of management. And it was a project, a big project, never slept, had to get um, tons of command team personnel for every continent together, trained and fired out. And I was one of the people that were fired out too, as the commanding officer of what's called the CMO International Extension Unit. It's, so it's like a CMO in, in LA. Um, and so I fired on that. But I was removed um, because just like a couple months after that, because my husband at the time, who was the commanding officer in West US, had attended an event that Miscavige was pissed that he did. So both he and I got my husband and I got escorted back to the int base. Wait, because he attended, because you attended an event? Not me, because Jim, who yeah. was my husband at the time, yeah. he he was, spoke as the COC, he, commanding officer of the uh, Continental Liaison Office for West US. Right, he spoke he at the... one of those. Yeah, oh. but it, it wasn't in West US. It was in East US. And so COB was really, DM was really pissed because- I see. But be, but what Jim was responsible for were the advanced orgs that were responsible for the whole West US, for the whole continent or right. uh, all of what all of US. So that's why he spoke at it. But anyway, Miscavige was pissed, called us both up, um, had us escorted up to driven back up to the international headquarters. Jim was sent to the rehabilitation project force. It was the last time I saw him in four years. Wow. And I was put at the swamp um, for two months under guard on heavy manual labor. And the uh, shower that I used was the same one that Mark Yeager was using, um, which is because he was out there in the swamp uh, in a cage that he built with bamboo, like we were talking about the other day. Yeah. Gosh, um, I'm, I, you know, I have to just t stop you for a second and yeah. just go, holy crap, I had no idea at this time, even though I knew and worked with you. Yeah. So we're talking 96 at this point. That would have been, yes. Yeah. So I was in Clearwater, Florida. I just had no idea you spent two months in the swamp. Like, what? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this girl, Christy Mullins, was my watch. Oh, and, Christy Mullins? Yeah, yeah. She was my escort to my eye doctor's appointment when I blew and escaped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> she probably went back to the rehabilitation project oh, yeah, course yeah. for letting me escape. Or, totally I mean, untrusted. I totally untrusted her. now. <laughs> yeah, she was always the kind of like straight-laced person that would comply to whatever order she was given. So it was yeah. terrible to have her as a watch because... Yeah, she, she kind of like... had the personality of a, no offense to bulldogs, but <laughs> kind of like a bulldog, bulldog or a pit bull kind of, Yeah, like nothing, you know, and again, she, no she offense was not to pit somebody bulls that... either, but this was a very mean person, is, let's yeah. just leave, it, leave dogs out of it. She was a very yeah. mean, sour person. Yeah, it made the whole thing just terrible. Yeah. But um, so what was interesting before um, Jaeger was was removed was um so 
there was this time in CMO International where Miscavige was on to Jaeger. Like it came up that Jaeger was getting alerted whenever uh, Miscavige was on his way back to the base. And okay. so, so oh. Miscavige was pissed off about that and felt that he was a treasonous ass and all this. Just because and, he was finding out that Miscavige <clears throat> was on his way back to the property. Yeah. And I yet, guess he didn't want to know. He, he wanted, wanted he wanted the shock and awe of arriving and catching everybody off guard because he's an ass. But right. um, so that was what we were briefed on. So we were all called up to um, to Miscavige's office and briefed on what a traitor he is. He's still my boss. He's still COC, commanding officer of Commodore's Messenger Organ International and Watchdog Committee chairman um, at that time. Like but super, a bunch of us were called executive. up. <laughs> a bunch of us were called up around him and 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 briefed and um so we were supposed to go and handle him so we go down and then i get a phone call from shelly and she says why haven't you taken over as cocmo international I'm like uh <laughs> do you see what happens to them <laughs> right <laughs> thanks um, but no thanks <laughs> yeah not gonna happen and we Which had a of course meeting was not an option we're, we're joking but you know you don't say no to a request like that really. oh i know yeah, yeah. but i did <laughs> oh nice you did i did say no i okay. did say no and we had a meeting to to figure out between me kathy and mike render and who else was in there Guillaume and Ronnie. So we, those are the people who got together to decide who was going to be COCM International. And I kept saying, Mark, 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 Mark. <laughs> and I didn't want to do it. I didn't, I, uh, number one, you're, it's just, you're just going to get blown to pieces anyway. Right. Um, number two, I was never sleeping on what I was doing in the first place. And, yeah. um, Mark Ingram been around 800,000 years and, and uh, he get he's a punching bag. So just put him on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's and that's what happened is, is he was put on it. And then, um, you know, then I think it was when I fired down to I see Mark's you and everything. I don't remember the exact timing, but yeah, then that's when Miss um, Jaeger went to the cage and built himself a cage down there and uh, at, at the swamp. He was there for a couple of years, you know, and until he went to the rehabilitation project force, and then he came back and I think he went back onto his position, but it was, Miscavige was saying he is the real deal SP. Right. And he was saying that he was, a, that David Miscavige was potential trouble source because he was connected to Mark Yeager. <laughs> right. And, and to, for context sake, and to bring it this back to Shelley, What's to say that Shelley's not now under similar circumstances to what Mark Mark Yeager was under? Yeah. And that Miscavige is not just doing the exact same thing to his wife. Yeah, that's why I wanted to bring it up because yeah. when you're considered an enemy or a suppressive of David Miscavige or um, any way against him, he will take measures yeah. and they're not pleasant. I mean, I've seen, I've seen what he does and i think that the he tried to run jaeger had somebody try to run jaeger down and he broke his leg get getting out of the way one time jaeger came into the office cuts all over the top of his head and because he's bald you can see it and his face and i said what in the hell and he said oh i fell into a bush meantime his communicator is looking at me like that's not what happened no i know what happened because I've seen it. Yeah. So um, that was an interesting thing. And then. Um, and, and again, just commentary there. Of course, we would never, no one would ever say anything bad about Miscavige there. But like the fact that he, Mark Yeager wouldn't even just be honest, like, oh, Miscavige beat me up. You couldn't even say that. Oh, no. Let yeah. alone I asked him what, when he had a abuse. <laughs> I know. And he had a cast on his leg. I said, what the heck happened to you? I wasn't there when it happened. And he said, uh, you know, I fell. Yeah, no, Sadie Johansson was the, the woman that drove after him. Miscavige ordered her to run Mark Yeager down with the car. Yep. Ugh. Another thing from Shelley. Um, one time in the in the watchdog committee conference room, um, Shelley 
was there. David Miscavige was there. David came flying up the ramp into the main conference room area looking for Jaeger and um, call, screaming his name. And I thought, oh, God, what's going to happen now? So I kind of came into the center to see what was going on. And um, he found Jaeger and then he he charged at him and threw him up against this tower of audiovisual equipment and bookshelves and it all came tumbling down. And Shelly was going, Dave, 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 like this, trying to calm him down, which didn't calm him down. But at least she was, you know, saying like, hey, let's cool it. Let's cool it, you know. So she did know that he was over the top. I right. know that she knows. And also there was another time when he was explaining superpower to us at a, in a conference meeting and all the steps that go into the superpower. And, and there's a, a step on, on this super tower program about taste because yes. it's all your senses. Right. Yes. And so he had all these oils of these different kinds of tastes and he wanted us all to taste all these tastes because he got these together. And, um, so Shelly was trying to pass it out, but she wasn't passing it out how he wanted it to be passed out. So he starts screaming at her. Anyway, so she exited stage left and hit that door. It was like one of those bar doors that you go out the heavy. She hit it so freaking hard and just left like that. And so I went, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So she's not taking his crap. So yeah. she's, she's, not, she's not subservient to the point where she doesn't have a viewpoint. Right. Um, because some people will just yes or yes or yes or yes or, and it, it's pathetic. So she, was, um, she, you were seeing signs. In other words, she was starting to push back against his his crap. Yeah, but then shortly after that, I think she was doing lower conditions because she sent around. There's this policy letter uh, in Scientology called Simon Boulevard. Right. It's the responsibilities it's of leaders. The responsibility of leaders, and yeah. it gives a whole thing of how you just you when you have a leader you flow them a hundred percent power yes um and so we were all she gave everyone this this i think it was a book that even had it in it and we were all made made to word clear it and um which was extensive because there's different forms of word clearing. Method nine word clearing is when you read something out loud and any hesitation, you have to stop and find your misunderstood word. <laughs> so right. you're in the dictionary the whole time. <laughs> it's crazy. I, and I that probably, was not a small I probably did, thing. You, did that with you on many occasions. <sighs> Sorry. So many times, so many times. I did the, didn't you supervise the key to life course? I did. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was on that stupid thing. <laughs> I had to, the method nine word clear the entire dictionary. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and uh, clear every definition of every small common word, including making it, using it in multiple sentences and all mm -hmm. that. But, but yeah, so go ahead. And I think I, I have to look up the name of that book, but I remember that Mark yeah. and I got a copy of that uh, mm -hmm. like the original book and gave it oh. to shelly and, and david miscavige one year for christmas oh well then she <laughs> turned around and got it for all the executives <laughs> for us to method nine word clear for 100 hours <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. but the other part of that um that she did was she devised an assessment and um it had all these wonderful things on it like l ron hubbard david miscavige uh, you know, I don't know. I All I know is what I read on after the assessment, which was accounting and balance sheets. So oh. I had to spend... <laughs> I didn't, luckily I didn't read on David Miscavige because everybody who read on David Miscavige had to put a picture of him upside down on the wall and look at it for two hours straight without flinching. Yes, yes, so, I, I remember this, and and again, I may have you know? I may have done this assessment on you, <laughs> but yeah, it was um it, it was from a policy that Hubbard um, had where it basically said that you know the only reason you'd struggle with something on your on your job is if there was something you couldn't confront and mm -hmm. face head on. So that was where the the posters came in, and like for example, Karen Hollander. Um, I had to make her do uh, do that on a big blow up poster of the Shrine Auditorium. <laughs> <laughs> That's really going to handle it. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. So so wait, so you had to 
so so you read on accounting and balance sheets. So what was the handling for that then? I had to get so the finance office was made to produce a whole bunch of balance sheets and accounting uh, folders and and documents and put it in front of me. You know what I did? Yeah, I slept. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at this surprised. thing and then went like this until and somebody came and wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> and then plus, how is look staring at figures on a piece of paper going to have me learn balance sheets and accounting? It's so stupid. It is. So it didn't didn't work. <laughs> Pretty uh, useless and futile, right? <laughs> yeah, a waste of time. Yeah, but so then I so I knew that it was um, part of her trying to make up the damage and deliver an effect because part of it is making up the damage and then delivering an effective blow to, blow to the enemies. And of course, all of the executives were enemies of David Miscavige. So yeah. she was getting the executives to do different things in order to deliver an, a blow to us. Yeah. And what, what were your observations on this? To me, Shelley was always very dedicated to finding what Hubbard policy would fix everything, right? Even David Miscavige's abuses and everything else, he wasn't the problem. It was just how could she use Hubbard's beliefs, policies, et cetera, to make things better. Was that, was that your view on that or did you have something different? Yeah, I mean, here's another, here's another example. Like um, I was, Miscavige and his complete creepiness, called in myself, pulled me into um, the conference room table with Mark Yeager. And I don't know who else was there, but D but uh, Shelley was there and David Miscavige and Mark Yeager and me and probably a couple other executives. And, um, and he said, so I want you to know that we've been doing a security check on Mark Yeager. Oh, I think I was WC Gold at the time and um, over the Golden Era Productions. Yeah. That's a hot seat. Yeah, uh, <laughs> oh God. I knew when I was going to get take on that post that I was going to be a banana split pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so he said, I've been doing security checks on Mark Yeager, and I want you to know that he has an evil purpose to get you removed from post for you to mm -hmm. fail. And I want to know, how does that make you feel? <laughs> Some of them there looking at Mark Yeager, looking at David Miscavige, looking at Shelly. <laughs> How am I supposed to react to that? Right. How am I supposed to react? Okay. I don't know if it's true, you know, but David Miscavige is saying it and he's trying to make him feel bad for having confessed that he'd like to see me fail or whatever. And I said, it doesn't make me feel good. Yeah. That was like the only thing I kind of could muster up was very anticlimactic for Miscavige. <laughs> yes. I guess he wanted to see me outraged or something. Right. But when we got up to leave, Shelly came over to me and she said, don't go PTS to all of this. So this, all of this meant the clown show that Miscavige was doing and that Jaeger was doing, and it was between those two. And I could, I was being put in the middle of it. And she pulled me aside and she said, don't go PTS to all of this. PTS is a potential trouble source because you have a suppressive on your lines. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you go affect you, you become a victim and all this kind of stuff is the concept um, of the suppressive, uh, activities that are being carried out against you. So right. she pulled me aside on our way out saying, you know, don't go PTS to all of this. So that to me told me if I ever get in trouble, I need to talk to her because she's got more of a head on her shoulders than anybody I'm surrounded by. <laughs> right. right. <now. laughs> yes. But you know, she's also a victim of the entire thing. And I want to know David Miscavige, where is Shelly? Yes. I want to know. Yeah, me too. And and if Shelly, you know, I don't know. I, I just think if Shelly at any point wanted to leave, then let's keep talking about this, like I said. Yeah. And she should be free. This is yeah. the U United States of America for crying out loud. This shouldn't yeah. be possible that someone can be locked up and just vanish for 18 years and her, be, not, not even be heard from by their own family. Under what circumstance is that okay? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> yeah. And did you ever, what were your observations about their personal relationship between Shelley and Dave Miscavige? No, no affection whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, she was, she was just on the job, on the job. He doesn't have affect. I never saw him display affection 
Right. Aside from after a grand opening event, he kissed the hand of Karen Hollander and said, good job or something like that. Hmm. That was weird. That is weird. <laughs> because it was the first time, first and only time I saw him show any sort of affection. But to me, it was a little weird. Um, and uh, between them, whenever I would see them, unless it was in a personal capacity, but even when I was in their room, it was it was always business yeah. between them. Like it, there was no affection. Right. Yeah. No. What I about you? Did you ever see? Just no, out of curiosity. I didn't. I had the yeah. same, the same, and and I absolutely saw the the same cracks starting to form that you mentioned. Yeah. Wherein, um, like one time, Shelly called me and she said, "You have no idea the position that I'm in and what I'm going through as a result." And I. I knew she was talking about Ugh. miscavige and his fits and and everything that was going on and it was yeah. a really really tough situation and Ugh. she was miserable yeah yeah and and so she's got no friends i mean right. if she's if if she's under guard at some property whoever's guarding her isn't a friend isn't right. somebody you can talk to they 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 write down anything that she says and report and report, report it. it straight up that's what she right. knows so she can't speak freely could you imagine yeah. 18 years of isolation under guard and anything you might utter being reported to the person who's oppressing you right it's and it's you actually can't, you can't seriously say, you can't even voice i want to leave otherwise i know you're right it is and they have the the fences and the guards and the, how do you even do it if you want to and she's in such an isolated place yeah Oh and man, I, I know. Like let's get helicopters or something. Yeah, I know. And to my knowledge, the the <clears throat> three there are three women guarding her, in mm -hmm. addition to whatever secure male security guards there are. Um, but to my knowledge, it's Antonella Tizi, who mm -hmm. you you likely knew I, she was at the Religious Technology Center. Yes. And Anne Rathbun, Jose Josie. Um, She's a who, witch. She is in my opinion. Yeah. She is. She is. Um, Didn't have an ounce of love in her heart that I ever observed. Yeah. It was just. Ugh. She is a person that refused to let me even talk to Mark the second time when I found out that I was pregnant. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, I did a completed staff work saying, please just let me talk to my husband because I was in Clearwater and he was in California. That you even have to ask somebody's permission yep. to talk to your husband about such an important matter yep. is, is, and then it get refused. She's a witch. So she she's witch. on Shelly, huh? She's yeah. on Shelly. Wow. She's on Shelly. And then the other person who you may or may not know is Elsie. She was Elsie Tucker, Elsie Benrime. Yeah. I, I did see her before El, as Elsie Tucker uh, up at the Ant base, but yeah. I never really had any um i think she, was she doing metered interviews and all this kind of stuff she was she was yeah an, a, yeah an i remember interrogation her interrogation person yeah for religious <laughs> with the so other young that. girls that were doing the interrogations yeah yeah and, and, wouldn't I, let you and i've actually known elsie since i was about 12. she oh, okay. her family got into scientology in the uk she's from france mm -hmm. um but, but again all of these people are 100 percent Scientology robots doing the bidding of David Miscavige and that is who Shelley Miscavige is surrounded by yeah and it, it occurred to me when you were talking earlier talking <clears throat> about Shelley's lack of friends mm -hmm. I think that the beagle she remember she started getting beagles jelly yes <laughs> <laughs> they they put commander stripes on jelly <laughs> yes jelly the beagle and she loved those dogs. Yeah. She, there was Lucy. By the time I left, she had five, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I remember the Jelly Program. They wrote a program <laughs> called the Jelly Program because Jelly could could sniff out, out ethics. And so if you, I remember I walked into the conference room one time and Jelly barked. And so it was like, you've got crimes oh, because she knows that you've got crimes. And, and I laughed thinking okay that's the biggest joke i've ever heard and it was like i'm serious <laughs> okay we're in what's that about the horse <laughs> yeah 
yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in oh, Zoom. Oh, Mr. Ed? No, about the, oh, I forget what it is. Like, did Napoleon or somebody have a horse that that he knighted or <laughs> I don't oh, remember. What yeah. it was. So that's what he did with his dogs. And he, he had, he had jelly walk around with commander stripes. And um, the other thing is that the, on the jelly program was just to find all the crimes of the executives. And I, I was made to word clear method nine, the jelly program. When I came back into CMO international from my trip into golden era studios. Anyway, it's a whole wow. story in itself. <laughs> okay. Well, well, I hope I hope you'll let me do more of these with you because it's of course, it's, of it's course. really fun to compare <laughs> notes unfiltered because we never, you know, what so I worked on the at at the headquarters from 1991 nine, until 2005. So our mm -hmm. paths crossed many, many times in yes. 14 years. If I ever had to interrogate you or was mean to you, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we never were on that kind of um playing together like right. like there were because because i think you went to flag when you went to rtc right yes, did you I go did. yeah so yeah. you weren't like put on to the int execs to to interrogate us it was some other people yeah though and, i was i was in later years in, and in like 98 until 2000 i was in the correction unit in religious technology center so i would have to attend all the management meetings that's where i most remember seeing you oh and, yeah and i don't know if you remember this but shelly had me do a project um <clears throat> with with the int executives at in those years 98 what was it 2000 what's that what was it so it was on the topic of believe it or not the computer screens and because remember it was the the you know the boob tube whatever oh, yeah. you call it, oh, the yeah. cathode ray um tubes and and there was some hubbard advice that shelley had come across where he made reference to the fact that those that those kind of tvs could be quote unquote hypnotic so okay. shelley had me do this project of doing before and after testing with certain Scientology management executives that she picked out. And I just don't remember if you were one of them or not. I don't think so, I was. Like Diane Canaeus was one of them. Uh -huh. um, anyway, a bunch of people. But so, and, and so we got, uh, I had to get um, uh, LCD screens. screens. LCD yeah, screens. I, I remember getting the LED screens and, yes. or LEDs or whatever it was, the screen yeah. that we put in front of it. I remember the result of your project, but I don't remember getting tested to see if I was a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, was like, I mean, it was kind of funny because it was, you know, the, like how, do a full battery of tests before, then get them a new computer screen and then do a full battery of tests afterwards and see if there was any improvement. Anyway, it was this whole thing. Yeah, I've, but, I've done, I did a million tests. Maybe I just didn't know I was check, being checked for being a robot. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. The, pro, the one I will say, though, the one project I know did have an impact on you that was initiated by Shelley was in later years she decided that the reason the reason management was not performing is because they had unhandled drugs and she had everybody her? back on the pure if yeah oh boy yeah. oh yeah shelly yeah wrong why wrong yes. why i yes. wasn't even a heavy druggie to sit in a sauna for eight months with five thousand niacin you, you you could really damage somebody yes i know it was, and i wasn't the only one there was a lot of us on that thing yeah Oh, yeah, I didn't anyway, I didn't I didn't think you knew that. And no, I didn't. I thought it was right out of Miscavige's bright idea. It could have it could have been something that he said, oh, they're probably all druggies. And but she was yeah, the... he, he talked about us being druggies. So, yeah, and I know that I know that he was on board with it for sure. If it wasn't oh, his yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, but um, <laughs> all right. So any any other Shelley experiences you would like to share? Well, those are the things that I I can think of right off, but um, I want to just let everybody know that I'm praying for her freedom and for Scientology to um, lose its tax exempt status because that's what they hide behind. All of their crimes are religiously protected somehow, and it's and to me that's just. Uh, that's where everything went off the rails. Yeah, I and, um, completely agree. The most, yeah. And David Miscavige totally changed. It was like, now I'm a free man to do whatever the hell I want to to you guys. And um, 
I think that if we just keep speaking out, we will um, keep raising awareness because if it can happen to her, it can happen to anybody. And I'm sure that, the, that there's family members that want to know where their loved ones are because they're out of touch. And um, so just keep spreading the word, keep getting the word out, and uh, one day we'll make a breakthrough. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I thought it would be nice to end with, what would you like to tell Shelly if you had the opportunity oh. to see her now? Shelly, it's hard, huh? Just, we're here. We're here. You'll be welcome with open arms. And that kills David Miscavige to hear that. And I'm glad yeah. because David, what you're doing is of the devil and God sees everything, even if it's in the dark. So Shelly, we're here and we will help you a hundred percent. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> and thank you again so much for agreeing to participate in this. And I'm standing up. Yeah. despite all of their harassment. And it's not easy. It's not fun to have my stupid hate websites and all these videos and all these things, PIs and whatever they do, because they're such a scummy organization. Yeah. It's not fun. But yeah. I do it anyway, because I know that it's right. And yeah. they make their own work's worst enemies because they cannot take responsibility for one single thing. They cannot get their act together. And because they take family members and use them as leverage and it's disgusting I and so agree. people don't just let go because of that so amen right, and very well said <laughs> a little fired up awesome. on the subject <laughs> yes no i so appreciate it and and you, you nailed it all around thank so you, thank, you, thank you anyway thank you again i can't wait until our next episode together yes, I, yes. I love collaborating with all of you i you're a, a wonderful person and a great thank friend you so much. and um, thank you you thank too you boy for of course <laughs> and until next love time love to you love you love to you and love to everybody who's watching thank you for your support it really means a lot. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay. Bye-bye.